so the funniest thing is I was recording <laughs> and then I looked off the mirror and I didn't see a blinking light so I was doing all this talking <laughs> just for nothing I guess I'm gonna call that warm-up I'm happy my spirit set to check the lights and check to see if the cameras recorded or not <laughs> hey if you have a motor vlog or you record videos or anything like that let me know if that ever happened to you at all <laughs> all right so Today's video, what we're going to talk about are the different steps in joining a club, a motorcycle club. So if you're thinking about joining a motorcycle club, if you're contemplating a motorcycle club and you have certain reservations about it, you know, uh, today I'm going to talk about it. Now, I'm not a part of a club, at least not yet, uh, but I, I have learned a lot. If you want to learn more about the clubs, like you need an expert, go to check my boy Sos the Ghost on Demon's Row. Check him out. And also check out Black Dragon. Black Dragon is also another dude that I like to watch a lot. As a matter of fact, he wrote the book, The Prospect Bible, which is an amazing book. All right. So let's get down to it. Before I start talking about the different steps in a club, let's talk about the biggest, the biggest um, reservation I hear a lot. And it's about too many rules. I don't want to follow rules. Right. And it makes me laugh sometimes when I hear that because We've been following rules our whole lives. If you drive a car, you're following lots of rules. If you have a job, you're following lots of rules. If you're married or even in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, you're following lots of rules. If you go to church, you're following lots of rules. If you, if you go to school, you're following rules. So no matter where you are in life, you have rules and regulations. So why is it so different? when it comes to a motorcycle club it's nothing new and and as a matter of fact these rules and regulations in the motorcycle world they are called protocols and these protocols is what keeps everything in check is what keeps everything in order is what keeps everybody safe these protocols are amazing things to adjust into your life yeah i, I mean i personally enjoy learning and the education that i'm getting as I'm going through my process, right? So once again, I'm not a part of a club yet, but I am going through a process. I'm not gonna name a club, you make your choice. Now, you're thinking about getting to a club and I'm gonna use references of relationships and martial arts. One thing about protocols, protocols in jujitsu, when we go into a jujitsu studio or a dojo, which dojo means gym, that means that you have to, number one, before you step on the mat, your shoes have to come off. And then you have to bow yourself into or be bowed in. And if you don't do that and you step in the mat with your shoe, shoes and you don't bow, you are considered to be very disrespectful and you disgraced your class. You disgraced your teacher, your sensei, your shihan, your sifu if you're doing kung fu, whatever it is, right? Those are protocols. Those are things for you to adjust to, okay? So don't be afraid of rules and regulations. It's good to know them so no matter where you travel in the world, you will have some understanding. And it is not everything is the same everywhere, but at least you will have some understandings. Okay, the first thing to know if you're looking to join a club is to find a club that represents your personality. Don't find a club that you think is your type of club because you see a bunch of guys looking tough and looking hard. No, don't do that. You need to find a club that represents you. Do your research, go to different events, you know, stay in the background, analyze how the brothers move. Do you want a club that's co-existence with men and women or do you want a club that's only men? And if you're a woman, do you want a club that's the same or only women, right? That's the first thing you need to do. Do your research, do your homework. So, now once you do that, let's say you find somebody who you know is a part of a club, a club that you're actually looking into doing. Approach that person, ask some questions. What I did was I went to an event and I saw a club that stood out to me out of all the clubs. The first time I've ever seen this club, for some reason, this club stood out to me and I approached them and asked the question, how do I go about learning more about you guys okay I was given a phone number I called and I was invited to come to meet up with some of the brothers at a meeting which was great right now you will have different ways to talk to somebody once you do that 
then you will be known as what's called a hang around and you are just hanging around the club you're not a part of the club you're not a part of the brotherhood you're not even considered to be anything within a club you're just hanging around the club okay it's like you go into a event and you see a girl and you like her a lot she's with her girlfriend she got the best physique you've ever seen in your life she's just absolutely gorgeous right you get to see her a bit she's hanging around you you guys get to exchange numbers you know you're trying to see how she does right you're trying to see what she what she acts like okay so you know you keep on going to the events where she's at now don't be don't be careful because there's a thin line between stalking and hanging around <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you are understanding the person that you're trying to be with. Same thing with the club. So you're hanging around the club. You're not gonna be told any club 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 business. You're not gonna be let into any personal affairs. You're not gonna be able to go to meetings, none of that stuff, because everything is club business. You're just hanging around. You will get to see a little bit more with the club. You will actually understand a lot just from kind of seeing how these brothers move within the club, right? Now, after that, after that, let's say that you really enjoy what you see with as a hang around and you want to be known at the next level. You want to go to the next step and that is called a prospect, a probie, you know, some people will give you a name, some people will call you probie X, they will call you by the, by alphabets because you are nobody depending on the club that you're going to. If you're in a respectful club, they will call you by your name. Proby Donovan, Proby Jermaine, right? Pros prospect Sean, whatever, right? And some people just call you Prospect, and the members will not know your name. We'll see which club you join. Now, you do not choose when you want to become a prospect. And I want to be a prospect, and it happens right away. No, you have to be voted in to be a prospect. The, the men in your club, the members of that club, has to vote you in. They have to vote you in to be a prospect for their club. And the prospect ship is just like a massive interview, okay? Now, let's revert back to the relationship. So in the relationship, okay, you're hanging around the shore, you're getting to see how she does, you get a phone number, and guess what? You guys finally go on a date, okay? You, you finally get on a date. That's the prospect. You're gonna do a little work to get to the next level. Now, once you become a prospect, you get your vest. You don't get any rockers. You don't get nothing. You just have a blank vest. You put in a little bit of work, okay? When the club looks and see what you're doing, and they see your, your, your uh, involvement, they see your enthusiasm, they get to see the, your level of, um, of admission to yourself, level of commitment to the club, level of removing like just your personal self and giving some energy to the club, giving time to the club. When they see that, then they will take that vest from you and then they will give you what's known as a top rocker. And the top rocker, every club is different, but the top rocker is really normally the name of that club, okay? So if, if your club is called Avengers, that top rocker is going to say Avengers. If your club is called, you know, Justice League, it's going to say Justice League, right? The top rocker in the, in, in the relationship status, okay, you're in. You know what I'm saying? You, you, now you and the girl, you guys are at her apartment, right? You, you finally got to her house and you finally got to do a little makeup thing, a little makeout stuff. You kissing. You're doing all these stuff, right? You just make it out. You get to feel up a little bit and you're doing your stuff, but you don't get to go to full throttle yet. You don't get to go to full throttle. You follow what I'm saying so far? Okay. Now, in the martial arts, same thing. You started off with your white belt and then you finally, finally got your yellow belt. Yay, nothing really big yet. You haven't done anything yet. Now, as you go through that process, you will now be required to do a little bit more work and you are required to show up to events. You're gonna feel entitled. You're gonna say to yourself, well, I'm a grown man. I got my family, I got my job, I got, I got church, I got all these things. I got things to do, right? Yes, understandable. But understand that when you do join, when you decide to join a prospect ship to get into a club, you have to have that sit down with your family, have to sit down with the people around you and let them know what you're going through so they can understand that some weekends you will not be around. You will be giving your time to that club. Now keep in mind, it's not gonna be forever, but this is a, sp a prospect ship, right? Now you put in the work, you get all the stuff done, you got that top rocker. Okay, 
randomly at any given moment they will tell you to give you their vest okay that's the next step the next step is now you get what's known as the bottom rocker and the bottom rocker is usually what represents the area where you are representing with that club that bottom rocker can say Atlanta it can say San Diego Oceanside New York whatever it represents the area of where your club is that's the bottom rocker okay now that bottom rocker is when you finally get a chance to have that physical connection with that female okay whoo you got that you in there now now you're doing your thing right yeah perfect but now comes the work because now you have to deal with the emotional aspect you got to deal with that emotional side right you got to deal with all the things that comes after you had that physical situation happen felt good didn't it i know all right so the bottom rocker is the same thing now you're really in the club a little bit more now now you're good you got two pieces to that patch yeah that's what i'm talking about well guess what now is when you get to work if you're a martial artist you get to that brown belt before that black belt now you get to work everything you did before was a warm-up this is where you will be tested when you get to this level this is where you really have to stay consistent and you got to keep people around you that will keep you grounded because the goal is to break you down it's just like the military the goal is to break you down before they build you back up they want to see what your breaking points are they want to know how you how you can act as a brother they want to know when you are under pressure are you going to fold they want to know are you willing to put your manhood aside and do petty things or they want to see what kind of man you are they want to know if your ego or your pride is going to be the leadership in your life or do they feel that they can trust you because keep in mind right whether you have on a top rocker or a bottom rocker or you whatever whatever you have on that represents that club you are still considered to be a representative to that club no matter where you go in the world so if you go out there and do something wrong then the whole club gets to gets the gets the repercussions of that situation that you do so they want to know who they have in their club especially if you're if you're going after an elite, an elite club like myself see i like elite clubs i don't want a club that has a million members and nobody know each other that's stupid to me i don't want to just walk around with a patch oh yeah he's a he's an ex ex member and this member and nah 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 nah, nah. i want to be able to look at you and know you that's a quality club to me i don't care about a thousand members give me a hundred men and i'm good give me five good strong men and i'm good you see what i'm saying so you represent the club so the work that you're going to put in the work that i'm putting in the work that i have to put in listen I laugh at it, I smile at it because I'm getting a chance to, to, to learn me. I'm getting a chance to introduce myself to me again. Why? Because in my life, I'm the leader in pretty much every darn thing that I do. I'm the leader, okay? In my household, I'm the leader. In my workplace, I'm the leader. In my gym setting, I'm the leader. I'm the leader. Even in the martial arts, I'm the leader. So I want to learn what's Donovan breaking point. What's going to make Donovan break down? And I'm going to have fun doing the process. Because remember, you have to remember it's a process, right? So you can't get too emotional. But you got you to gotta smile your way through it and make the process fun. And you remember, you make the process as long as you want to make the process. And here goes another thing. Speaking of protocols, never ask. Never ask how long will it take for you to get your patch. When am I going to get my patch? Just shut the hell up. Go through the process and enjoy it. And know that these men are not going to put you through stuff that they're not willing to do themselves or that's going to cause you harm or cause you your freedom or cause you your life if you're in a club that does that and i'm telling you this from just from a professional standpoint if you're in a club that does that then you you are in the wrong club and if you allow people to do that because you want a patch then you need to check yourself check your manhood okay now after you do all that you go through the work the club will now get together and choose if you are in fact worthy of getting that middle patch which means that you are a full a fully patched member that means that you are now that official black belt now in the relationship this is when the engagement happens right 
the marriage comes after the family begins to grow the problems begin to show itself the, 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 that's when you really really start to do the work okay the marriage now most clubs I can't speak for all but ma the majority of the clubs if there are 90 members in that club and 89 of those members says yes to you joining but one of those members says no then you will not make it in the club oh man let me just look at this view real quick that's why I came up here you will not make it in the club as a matter of fact you will be kicked out your everything you earned will be taken away okay <sighs> look at this view for a second this is why sometimes I just come out to these places most people live out here don't even know this exists out here it's just gorgeous it's beautiful now and those are the steps once you become a fully patched member then you are now a part of the club a hundred percent part of the club so if you have a lot of ego if you're really emotional if you just know that your life is all about just you all the time and you're not able to use the words we or us and it's always me and I then the club life is probably not for you as a matter of fact in the very beginning if you're with the right people they will tell you whether the club life is for you or not they will tell you like yo this club is not for you maybe you need to find something else Maybe you need to go to an RC, which is like a riding club, you know, go to a social club, whatever. But don't worry about the club because the club life is just not for you. If you find yourself getting angry and upset and frustrated all the time, then I don't know how you will actually make it through the process. Like, like I'm ready for this. Like for me, I'm, I'm telling these cats, yo, bring it. I don't want I don't want easy work. Easy work for me, you don't accomplish anything. I want to make sure that when I get that patch, it's going to be the hardest thing for you to take my patch back. I will I will mess you up. I will mess you up really bad. I'm talking about really bad before I take that patch off because you are not, I repeat, you are not going to get that patch from me. It's almost it's, it's going to be almost impossible. Unless I choose, unless I choose to give you that patch. You feel what I'm saying? So, being a part of a club is not as bad as a person would think. And once again, I know that movies mess it up for a lot of us. And a lot of us see these movies and we begin to feel like, oh man... I'm going to have to go and rob banks. I'm going to have to sell drugs. I'm going to have to smoke cigars and drink alcohol. Man, listen, if you feel like you got to do that type of stuff, I don't know what the heck kind of person you are. For you to even think that, that tells me that you believe everything you see in here, right? <sighs> I got to walk y'all down here, man. So, for me, I'm speaking just from my personal self. The guys that I see, man, them boys smoke cigars all damn day. They smoke cigars, drink their beers. I don't drink beer and I don't smoke cigars. But that doesn't mean that I don't belong to the club. Because each person have their own things. But guess what? They laugh. They joke. They're family men. They work hard. They're successful. They're all about relationships with, the, with God. They believe in self. They believe in, in the camaraderie. They believe in the brotherhood. Oh, man. Oh, that's the perfect club for me. I'm loving my club. And even if I don't get patched in as a full member... That's still my brothers at the end of the day because we're still building that relationship. So if you're thinking about that club life, man, and you're contemplating on it, I'm going to encourage you to just, like I said, find a club that you like. Find a club that makes sense for you. Don't just go after it because it feels like it's okay and it feels like no. And don't go after it if you feel iffy about it. Don't feel iffy. Be, be, be sure, be completely sure, completely certain that this is what you want to do because you don't want to marry somebody and then find out later that this person, this woman was a slut or she was a hoe and she was sleeping around with everybody and all of your friends come to your house while you're not there and they're all banging her out and then later down the line, you find out from some of your boys of what's been going on and then you're mad at her and mad at them. No, you can't be mad at her 
and you keep you can't be mad at them you have to do your due diligence and you have to do your homework to find out what the hell um this person is about so that's what i'm saying with the club life you got to figure out that same situation you got to know what this life is about you see what i'm saying leave it in the comments if you're a part of a club um, leave it in the comments also if there's anything I'm saying that you can relate to. Leave it in the comments if you're thinking about joining a club or if you're actually prospecting for a club. And tell me how that's going. Okay? Because there are a lot of people who really need to know more about club life. I just feel like it's being glorified in the wrong way. And a lot of people use instead of motorcycle club, they call them motorcycle gangs. And people start to use those words loosely. And when people hear gangs... Oh man, this hill is crazy. When people hear the word gang, they associate it to Bloods, Crips, Latin Kings, whatever, right? And it's not a gang. Motorcycle clubs are not gangs, okay? Motorcycle clubs is a club. You don't, you don't hear people call a gun club a gun gang or a car club a car gang. You don't hear people saying like the church club or the, the praise club is a praising gang. No. So they want people to believe that Oh, these guys in these bikes with leather jackets and, and gloves and they ride with these vests on. These men are horrific men and all they do is drink beer, right? It's like saying all black men, <laughs> all black men sell drugs or they only play sports to get money. It's all stereotype and it's all wrong. It's completely wrong and we have to change that narrative and start to show people like, hey, we are not here to cause problems. Yes, our bikes are loud, but expect the bikes to be loud so you can be seen and heard. But get to know the things that we do as a unit, right? Wow, that's my cardio right there. Woo, I'm breathing on this one. I love it. Get to know the things that we do as a unit and get to respect it and don't believe all the crap. Now, it's up to the club members to start doing more unified stuff, right? To start being more unified because every time there's a beef, every time there's something going on in the bike world and people start dying, people start getting shot, you know what happens? It makes all of us look bad because most of the world don't know whew, the difference between uh, one percenter, a 99 percenter, a three percenter, a social club. If you decide to wear a vest that says no club, um, lone wolf, people don't know the difference, right? The only people that know the difference is the people who are literally part of clubs and they know what is right and what is wrong. But if we start doing things together, as a unit, oh my God. Man, that will go such a long way. And people will start to see the unification of clubs coming together all over the world and doing more respectful things because right now I'm gonna be real with you. From, from what I'm seeing, it's almost like as if the government is aiming to shut down clubs because we are such free men. They're aiming to shut down clubs, whether it's a 1% club or a 99% club. 99% clubs and 1% clubs 1% clubs are no, is no big difference no more compared to what it used to be back in the days back in the days you know yeah they were they were it was different but now everybody has jobs everybody has responsibilities everybody's on the on, on, on you know on the grid nobody wants to go to jail for dumb stuff anymore so we all got to get together all right so that's it I, I said I wasn't going to make the video too long, but I decided to share a bunch of stuff with y'all anyway. Me, on my outro, I'm looking forward to going through the next level. Yeah, batteries got, 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 got murdered just a second ago. Lost my train of thoughts, but anyway, I'm out of here. Just want to tell you guys, don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid to get out there and just connect with members in the clubs. It doesn't matter, 99%, 1%. Just get to know the guys. Get to build that community. Build the relationships because we all need to gather more often. Imagine if all the clubs got together and started doing way more um, good. And so the media, because the media is always going to portray things as bad. It's always going to happen. It happens all the time. All right? So leave it in the comments. Let me know if you found this video helpful in any way. 
if anything I said, you're able to resonate with the information, all right? So much love. I'm out of here. Don't forget, ride fit or don't ride at all, baby. I'm out. Peace.